Hey, what's going on, guys? Before we get to the interview with Wes Johnston, I want to tell you guys about DraftKings. The 2021 basketball season is here. The teams around the league took the offseason to retool and revamp and are ready to hit the court. DraftKings Sportsbooks, America's top-rated sportsbook app, has rolled out another one of their can't-miss offers. Trying DraftKings Sportsbook is easy, so what are you waiting for? Get in on all of the action now. To celebrate the return of basketball, DraftKings Sportsbook is giving new players 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup this week. That's right. All you have to do is bet $1 on any featured matchup this week, and if your team wins, you cash a crisp $100. While we are all excited for the return of basketball, let's not forget about football's playoffs are right around the corner. So head to the app now to check out all of the DraftKings daily odds boosts. DraftKings is safe secure and reliable, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. Download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code FIELD68 when you sign up to get 100 to 1 odds on any featured matchup this week. That's code FIELD68 for new players to get a shot at $100 on any featured matchup this week for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Must be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbooks for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Now let's get to our interview with Wes. What's going on, everybody? So we got a great guest today, another Syracuse legend. Um, I had a chance to play with him, but it wasn't in the games. It was just in practices. Uh, so I got to see, uh, you know, the special talent that he was and, and all the athleticism and um, everything else he brought to the table. Probably a, probably the the best dunker in Q's history, if you ask me. Um, I mean, he, he was special. He was a special athlete. Um, but the one and only Wes Johnson. Wes, I appreciate you coming on, bro. I thank you for having me, sir. That's all good. How's everything been? Uh, through everything, everything been good, though, man. Uh, no complaints. Uh, I want to say everybody healthy. Uh, just, just trying to get through the best we can. But for the most part, everybody's been good. I've been good, so just trying to take care, of, take it one day at a time. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So we're, we'll start. Uh, we'll start at Iowa State. You spent two years at Iowa State. Yeah. Um, your freshman year, you, you. I mean, you had two good years at Iowa State. You know what I'm saying? Your freshman year, you averaged 12 and eight. Um, you were all, all. Uh, Big 12 rookie team. Um, your second year, it was it was up and down, but that was because of some injuries. But you still made honorable mention uh, all Big 12. And back then, I mean, the Big 12 was real. You Kansas, yeah, uh, you know, Baylor, Kansas State, all them. So, uh, you know, tell me about those first couple years at Iowa State. Uh, you know how that was, how that experience was for you um, in the Big 12. Uh, it was cool. I mean, we had. You think about it, they had that um, that Kansas team, and I think KD was there at the time when he was with Texas, DJ yeah. Augustine. Uh, then I think the next year when I was there, Bees and the K State team that they had. So Big Twelve across the board had had crazy talent, crazy talent. Uh, for me getting there, my my freshman year, it was I would say it was a surprise to them because. The guy that recruited me to come there, uh, he had bounced around a couple schools prior. And they recruited me as a guard, like a, a point shooting guard, because I was like 6'1", 6'2". So he, you know what I mean, he didn't see me. Then I fell off the radar. I was in Michigan. Matter of fact, I was in, the, I was in Michigan going yeah. up, uh, doing a couple runs with the Mustangs. And uh, who else I was up there? I was in at uh, Persian hooping a lot. So I was, I was in the, was in the deep east side. It, 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 yeah. Whoever knows Detroit, they know Persian. That's deep east. That's yeah. you in the thick of it. I was there with uh, with Petey, uh, yeah. hooping with him. I was so I was doing that for almost half a year till I got that call. So I pulled up to Iowa State. I get out. I'm six seven. He looking at me like, <laughs> <laughs> what we about to do with you? So I recruited you. You were <laughs> you were five inches shorter. Um, so I went to sign there, so they would have me in different positions. So it was kind of, it was kind of weird my, my freshman year when I was there because they didn't really know how to play me. 
we had a we had a, actually had a really good team. We was all athletes. So uh, so coach at the time that was there was uh, Doug McDermott, Doug uh, his father. Oh, so he's now who's at uh, Creighton? Yeah. So he was my coach my freshman year. So it was just like all this athletic, all this talent there. And it was like his first year at a big school. So he was like caught off guard with that too. So it was like one of the things he was trying to learn us. We were trying to learn him. And then I ended up getting hurt coming into my sophomore year there. And I messed my ankle up really bad. And so I had to go on back and forth. If I was going to medical red shirt or if I was going to play. So I was like, you know, I'll just sit out. So I'm coming to the game in a boot and hooping. So I ain't know the severity of my, my injury until like the end of that season. And they were like, you need to have surgery. And I'm thinking like, damn, if I would have known this, <laughs> yeah, I would have sat out um, like the whole season. But this is for the love of the game. Like if you, I feel like if I could walk, I could play. That's how I yeah. felt. So that came, one thing led to another. And then I was like, you know, I need to, I need to leave. I need to move and move on. So came about it. Um, Murph knew the same people, being from Michigan. We all um, knew the same people. Uh, it was a couple more schools, Ohio State, Pitt. Uh, they came in, Villanova. I talked to them a lot, um, but went to Cuse, talked to Beheim, and uh, my moms and they were like, man, you better not go. That's the furthest thing away from Texas. You better <laughs> not. So I, had to, I left and then came to Cuse, and then the rest was history after that. So, I mean, I, I was kind of wondering, too, because, like, those two years, you didn't have bad years. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you were all big, all big 12 rookie team, and then you made honorable mention even when you was hurt. Right. And that was a tough conference. Like, it was, it was a tough conference. So, you was competing. So, I was wondering why, why, the, why the transfer? You know what I mean? Why, why did you tra- decide to transfer? Me, and why did you choose Q's over all those schools? For me, me leaving, I would think it was just – back then, it was just I wasn't – getting fulfilled as a player. I didn't feel like I was being used right as a player. Uh, it was no knock on, on the coach. Uh, me and him actually spoke about it like years after. Uh, and he was like, he apologized for it too, because he's like, he didn't use me in a way that he could like basically help me grow. So it wasn't no knock on him. It was just the fact that I, I just needed to do what was best for me. And Shit, he thought you was six one still. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> And man, he looked at me like I was crazy. So, right. uh, so I left. And then for Q's, it was just like seeing Bayham and then him just being straightforward with me. Like, you have to earn your spot. And him being a Hall of Fame coach and seeing all that talent and everything, I felt like it was a no-brainer for me with the schools that was on, like I had narrowed it down to. And, like, yeah, Melo played a big part in it too, just seeing the success that he had and then the history of, of Q's. And like, yeah, when I got up there, it just felt right. So, yeah. So I don't know if you remember, but I remember when you came on your visit and I was, yeah. I, I think I was in, in the weight room in Manly. In the room, yeah. <laughs> rush, man. and, and I remember like, hey, this this West Johnson, like he, he this is where he gonna come. And I remember seeing you long, like, I was like, oh, this this Syracuse, like, yeah. You know how Syracuse like guys recruit like you. You the prototypical Syracuse guy like you long, lanky, athletic, perfect for the zone. Exactly. And then obviously when you got here, you took it to another level. Now look, you got so so you get here, you have to sit out. That team, bro, the team when you sit out, the team that we had, man, I, I wish people could have saw the practices because look, it, myself, Johnny, Paul, oh. Andy, Ao. Um, Rick, school. Uh, it was every day, though. That's what I'm saying. And then you was practicing, so I was. I'm thinking to myself, "Damn, if we had, if we had West playing, like it, but it, it would have been a whole nother. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about getting live from Johnny. You know what I mean? It was crazy because I was like, I talked to talked to them. I'm like, is there any way to see if like my injury or something like? It was misused. Was, I was like trying to figure that team was crazy. Then in the practice, I'm like, y'all wanted to hoop so bad. Cause it was like, I <laughs> can't even describe it. That shit it was every night, every every practice, it was like I'm so competitive. It was like game day. Bro, like I I remember just because you know how we were we 
we talking shit. I'm talking shit. Johnny talking shit. So like yeah, that yeah. competitiveness, like it kind of like rub off on everybody else. And I remember seeing you. You know, remember when we had to do the. So like every time at practice we do the layup, we go do the uh, a layup, and then we do the three man weave, and then we no. start throwing it up. Like oh, that's yeah. when I seen this. I seen this dude start catching doing wow. all. <laughs> you know what I'm so I'm like, damn. If we had, if we had this dude, because we made a sweet sixteen run. Yeah. That. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and to add you to the piece. Man, that would have been a whole nother level. But what what did you learn from that year? You know what I mean? Sitting out and, and not being able to play. What did you learn uh, from Coach Beheim and just being there? Um, Ben, I think he would just he, – he helped me to say just be me. I think that was the main thing I was missing because I was trying to fit in prior when I was at Iowa State when I left. So he was saying be me. Don't even conform. Don't prefer. Just be yourself. And I think – seeing that edge that everybody played with on that team. Um, it, it, it helped me a lot when I was able to sit out, just to sit back and to see how the zone worked, seeing how different players' tendency was on the team. So I think that 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 kind of pushed me to even, like, go harder. And that, and that's one thing about that people, um, you know, who play for coach really know, like, if you can do it, he going to let you do it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he, he not going to – back he he definitely gonna let you go ahead and and play and sure, and he did sure. that with you that next year uh oh nine oh ten unbelievable year for you like right off the tip bro like uh, north carolina you mvp at the 2k class you had like i don't know you had like 25 and that north carolina team was tough that was who they have i don't know they that was because they won it the year before yeah they had ed, ed david they had john they had uh larry Drewson. Because uh, Ty Lawson and Ty Danny Green, they had just left. left. Just left. So yeah. you was getting, I mean, you was giving work early, bro, like 25 right away. And then that whole year, I mean, you guys was ranked number one for, I mean, bro, it was a, it was a while. It was you wild. Know what I'm I, I remember that squad, bro. I remember what you was, I think, what was, what was the overall record? Like 30 and two or something? 30 and four, 30 and five. We lost five. Yeah, we were running through people, bro. But tell me about that year, bro, like for you, like your whole experience, like just going surreal. through that season. Surreal. It was like we knew lacing it up going out there that we was going to smack whoever we was going to play. Like, but it wasn't no expectations for us coming into the season, which was crazy. One rank, when nobody talking about it. So it was like kind of a, we had a chip on our shoulder coming in and we were like one of those, this, slipping through the cracks, playing people that was raining and smacking them. Like, oh, hold on. They actually can hoop. They actually can go. So then we start getting the recognition recognition that we um, deserve. But coming into it, everybody, it was like we were playing for one another. When nobody worrying about their own stats, nobody worrying about nothing. They, everybody was worried about winning and the next guy up. So we came out there, we were just having fun. And so it was – it was fun to see. It was good to see that everybody just really wanted to win. When you want to win and it, you want to see the next man do good, you see the team that we had, like we were winning. So it was, it was, it was fun. So, so it, 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 like quick, quickly tell me like how it was on campus that year. Cause, cause I remember, <laughs> so, so look, so look, I remember before I had went overseas, I came in, I came back to the Houston stay with y'all. I remember, yeah. remember when I was staying with y'all on the, uh, yeah. On, on uh, the new new apartments or whatever. UV. At, at UV, right, right. So, and I remember y'all had left could, to go to North Carolina, and I'm watching y'all play. I'm like, man, this team crazy. And then the campus was wild. Like, tell me, like, give me like a quick story about like the campus day year, bro. Man, anything from from Chucks to Harry, going <laughs> sign here. It was like it were real rock stars. Yeah. Going to any frat on like this, any frat that's going to kick it anywhere, bro. We're rock stars. And it was, yeah. everybody enjoyed it though. It was like every everything we did, we did together. Especially in the year when we, uh, when you were there, when you were playing, yeah, we were always together. Yeah. Going over to have it, uh, everybody having ciphers and everything. <laughs> <laughs> having ciphers now, for, for, for y'all don't, uh, who <laughs> doesn't know what a cipher is, we was freestyling. We, we was battle rapping. Yeah, so we, everybody. We, Everybody, we go and, and probably and probably Rick Jackson was the worst. We go, we we gonna keep that for another time. But man, Rick was just he was all Philly. 
good. <laughs> Oh, man, that was a good time, though. But, man, but this campus was alive, though. It was cool, man. It was like, it, it definitely needed that, just becoming off the year that y'all had, and then we back doing it with the year that we had. It, it was like, it was cool. It was fun, man. Definitely one of those times that you won't forget. No question. So, I'm saying, like, that year for you in particular was, like, real special, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Big East Player of the Year, first team All-American unanimous, and this is your, this is your first year, bro. Like playing, coming off you you sat out that year. You come right in and and just go to work. Like, what gave you that confidence to to come in and, and really do that? Like, what did you have a certain game where it was like, all right, I, I I could do this anytime I want. You know what I'm saying? Was there a certain game where you really was just like, I'm gonna take it a whole another level? I think that Lemoyne game we lost. You killed. That was like for me. It was like okay. You can that you can do this. Like not even saying like carry a team, but I'm not like nah. It's time to go. It was time to go, and it was all that preparation, that hunger from sitting out and from being hurt and coming back from the injury and this the stuff, the play, the like the plan that we did um, as far as practices and the pickup games and all that preparation prior coming into the, the season. It was like all that hunger was let loose. So I want to kind of touch on this too about, so it was supposed to be a national championship year. Just real, you know, real spill. Like, man, listen, man, A.O. don't I mean, get hurt. It's a wrap. That's so talk, tell me about that a little bit more. A.O. gets hurt. Like what was y'all, what was going through y'all mind though? Like right there, was it, was it doubt in y'all mind or was it like, man, we can still. No, it wasn't no doubt at all, but it was like, it took like life out of us. Cause when he went down in a George, I still remember that. He went, yeah. Georgetown, he went to try to block a shot and he jumped and I just seen him falling. And I'm looking like, yo, get up. <laughs> he looked at me like, nah. I'm like, oh my God. And then after that, it was like, every day I'm asking, can you go, can you go? And he's like, I don't know, I might be able to, but I can just tell, like, he didn't really want to say it, like, I was done. But I think that really affected the team in, in a whole because he was the center. He was like the anchor of it. And that's all. Yeah, he was the anchor of it. And it was like he gave that factor that we needed this a little push, regardless of everybody else doing what they did, he held it together. And and two, like, because you guys ended up losing to Butler, who ended up going to the national championship game and, and just barely losing to Duke. But and 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 Rick was great. He was young still. Rick was uh, Rick was what? Uh sophomore? Sophomore. Rick was a sophomore. So losing AO kind of was like that's that. He already had that experience. He know what time it was. Yeah. And then you throw Rick in there. It's different. It's different. Rick was Rick held it down because next year he got, I think, defensive player of the year, if I'm not mistaken, or the, or the year after Rick, that. Rick definitely held it down. He he had a hell of a game. I remember, I think, against Florida. He like I think that was his coming out part against Florida. He was like 20 and 10 against that in that game. He like he helped us, he pushed us to win that game. But him playing alongside AO at different times. It was like, it was like a good tandem there. And him like, not saying it was a lot of weight on his shoulders, but it was just uh, AO out the mix. It just made people do something different than they weren't used to doing. So it was, it was, it was tough, man. especially at that time. At that and time. now guys kind of have to do, they have to do a little bit different now. Cause you know, you got to kind of change it up a little bit with AO out. Cause we may not be running the same stuff or, Whatever my the spacey might be different. It's, yeah. Yeah, they, they defended a little bit different. So uh, but I remember, bro, that year was special, bro. I just remember watching from overseas and then seeing, like you said, seeing AO get hurt. It was like, damn, it, it took the win out of my sales. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? That's his, his senior, yes, his last year too. And it's like you get hurt. Like I'd rather him be able to go out fighting, like going out fighting with us, but it was it definitely sucked though. Yeah. So what what game in your mind? Or it could be a practice, whatever, a moment, whatever it is, really, you know, sticks out to you the most, you know, that, that you remember the most in a Syracuse jersey. Um, I would say. Or your favorite game, whatever whatever you want. Game, uh, it's, a couple, it's, it's like, it's a couple of them. Yeah, couple, share all of them. A uh, couple of them. I think that first one was probably when Bam won his 800 win. It was like good to see something like historic, like it'd be a part of something like that. Um, North Carolina game, 
So that was just my first time being in the garden, uh, playing in the garden. Um, that whole that, that tournament, honestly, California and North Carolina. Um, California had Jerome Randall, I think. Mm-hmm. He was tough. Tough. Yeah. Uh, and when we played Nova at home, and it was cracking. Oh, my God. Like, I ran out, and I'm looking at the crowd. I think it was like 34,000 in that thing. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, they packed it out for real, but it was – like that shit was special. I special. I think that eight hundred win, and then that that, um, that that garden tournament when we played the two K classic. That's probably yeah, that, my, my favorite. So ain't nothing like playing in the garden, dog. Like no. it, it feel like you on stage. You for know what I'm sure. saying? For sure, it ain't nothing like it. When I walked it, out of there, ran out of there, I'm looking like, yo, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's go to it's real, bro. Right, and it ain't, and it's really, it, it's probably like fifteen thousand. Yeah, it didn't feel like it. Sell that thing out before the Knicks. Right. (laughs) (laughs) For real, though. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Still to this day. Yeah. No, for real. Talk about about Coach Beheim a little bit. What was your experience about, like, playing with him or playing for him to kind of talk about that? (laughs) And then, then, bro, you got to do it because I asked everybody who come on. You got to give me what's your funniest Coach Bayheim moment or just the moment that sticks out to you? We're like, damn, Coach. No, nah, I'm going to tell you, when I, we played Seen Hall and <laughs> we getting, I don't know, we getting, we were getting beat, but we weren't getting beat bad. We're going, I was playing terrible though. So I'm walking back from to the huddle. And he stopped me. He was like, son, do you want to go to the NBA? I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I'm in my head, like, we doing this now? I'm like, yeah. Said, we well, doing this? Playing like a bitch. I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> and he looked at me again. And he was like, do you want to go? I'm like, yeah. So quit playing like a bitch. I'm like, wow. I sat down and I was tight. I'm like, yo, fuck you, nigga. I'm like, that's how you going to do it. So after that, I ain't say nothing else. And we went out there. And I think I had like, 20 and like 17 boards. <laughs> I was rebounding everything. But but after that, before that, he was all calm. Nothing. He would never yell. I mean, he would. He'd get on AO because AO won't, won't be rebounding or something <laughs> under the AO by something. But he would always calm, cool with me. But then that game, I don't know what I did. He stopped me right on the court and then just went ham. I'm like, you know what? I right. I got you. But it worked, though. Hell yeah, it worked. Like, how did how did like playing for him help you out in your career? What did you, how did it help you? Um, I just think this the people that he was coaching and been around, the teams that he played with, um, that he coached. I mean, and for him, he was just so direct. And he was like, I don't need you being a superhero. I don't need you to come out here and try to save anything. I just need you to be West. And that's how he coached me. He didn't was like, I don't need you. As far as work on this, work on that, he'll say that. Um, but he just was so relaxed and chill. Like, if you want to be go to the league or be the best you can be, it's on you type of thing. He wasn't holding your hand, but he gave you that reassurance that you have to be responsible for you. And a lot of people abuse it, but some people take it as, you know what, all right, I got you. And for him doing that for me, I mean, it was a it's perfect. I needed that. And that's some real league shit, though. Yeah. Right? Because they ain't about to be babysitting you in the league. Like, coach oh. kind of running like that, right? Yeah, at all. So he came in, and that's, where he, that's how he gave it to me. So it was cool. I needed yeah. that. Though. So you had – you played – the one year you played at Q's, All-American year, unbelievable year. Like I said, Big East player of the year. You enter the draft. You get drafted fourth by, by Minnesota. Mm-hmm. So tell me, you know, take me through that whole experience, just getting drafted, hearing your name, being with your fam, like being able to walk up, shake, shake the commissioner hand. Like, t- tell me about that, bro. How that felt, man. Man, I would say I was the most nervous I ever been in my life. Like, like childbirth was nervous being there with my kids. But that time I'm sitting there like, man, like nervous. Yeah. And as soon as they called my name, all that just like went away. I walked up there and it was like one of those childhood like dreams, like coming true. And like 
then so like kid in the candy store open up your uh, Christmas present or whatever it was just like that walking across and all that all that stuff I had dealt with coming through my my career prior to that like all that vanished like it didn't even matter no more like now it was like solidified what I was dealing with and what I had put all that hard work in was like coming true walking across that stage so that whole night was like surreal. I couldn't even like <laughs> believe it. Yeah, that, I mean, it's it's a childhood dream. That's what that's what you've been working for your whole life, right? For sure. So you get to Minnesota. Uh, you have a good year, bro. Like your first year, you have a good year. Your second team, all rookie. Tell me about some of the challenges um, coming from college to the league. It's a business now, so you know it's money involved and and. You know, we know it's politics involved. We okay. we just know how it is. So tell me about, you know, that experience, that first year experience and going through the ups and downs of Minnesota. Getting to Minnesota during that time was was crazy because they were going through a whole ordeal of rebuilding. So you get there on the rebuild mode. Now I'm being old, I understand everything about that now. Being on the rebuild mode, it was you coming to like hell, basically. And they trying to figure out what direction they want to go into, uh, what kind of identity do they want. And like you being drafted that high coming to a team like that, but it's like everybody on your team is either a rookie, second year, maybe a third year player. That's it. So you really don't have no structure, no discipline, no vet that's going to guide you through nothing. So my first year getting there, it was like they learning like I'm learning. So it's like we just in practice this. They're teaching the entire time. So three hour practices. I'm like, yo, what is this? Yeah. Like, what are we talking about here? Like, we need to, okay, when we pass here, they take two dribbles, you cut. It's like, bro, we, we know how to play ball. Like, why are we not like just working on our crap, like just working on individuals and like we implementing like offenses, but we're like, they're like teaching, teaching, like breaking everything down step by step, which was, I get it, you need that, but end of the day, if we ain't learned this. Before this, like, what was going on? Exactly. But uh, that first year was a, it was experience because I uh, a lot of coaches didn't see eye to eye um, from top to bottom, head coach on down, from the organization on down. Like, from, who was the head coach at that time? Kurt Rambis. My Kurt coach, Rambis. Kurt Rambis, Bill Embiid, uh, Reggie Theus. Uh, Damn, all old head, all old school all old heads. heads. And J.B. Bickerstaff, he the head coach of Cleveland now, which was like basically uh, my, he was my vet in a sense. Like he would try to tell me from defensive schemes, where to be at on rotation, offensively, uh, how I could, uh, I could help, I could help myself really like be more effective in a certain offense that we were running. So he was a huge help. Uh, Derek Martin, we had him, he was a, a, a guard. That was Johnny's like, yeah. Left handed? Yeah. I remember him, yeah. So that was, uh, he was like talking to Flynn a lot because Flynn was on the team with him. The second year Johnny came in, right? He came the first year. So he was already there, yeah. He was already, that's right. I'm tripping. Yep, yeah, you're right. Tell, man, how was that, bro? Because you ain't, because we got, to, you didn't get to play with him. Nah. And now you come to, to the Minnesota in the league and you, your teammates. I didn't get, get to play with him really did. He was hurt. So I get that his hip was messed up. And he was dealing with that, and you could tell Flynn wasn't him. He wasn't him. Like he was spirits were down. You know, Johnny Loud. He talking. He right. Yeah, he, he would like he still would do that, but it wasn't he. He wasn't himself. And then he started getting like that towards like uh, All Star second half of the season, and then we start hoping again it was cool because it was like finally we got we could, we could play. Um, but he still wasn't himself, which was suck to see because I felt like he got rather his ability, his career, like, early on, because he had a hell of a year as rookie year. Hell yeah. Hell of a year. And coming back off that, uh, him being injured, and him just sitting there trying to rehab and get back to his full strength, and dealing with the shit that he was dealing with. Everybody, honestly, was dealing with uh, our first couple of years in Minnesota. It, it was crazy. Um, so I know talking to people around the league during that time, they were like, young fella, this ain't how it's supposed to be. <laughs> So I didn't know. I'm thinking like this is how all this shit is, but it wasn't like that. Well, like you said, like it, it's certain organizations that you kind of just tell, like, and 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 I'm looking at like Sacramento, uh, you say Minnesota, and like 
early on, like Oklahoma City back when they just – like these these are teams that are just trying – and Sacramento's doing better. Yeah, you know that. what I'm saying? They're, they're, trying to, they're trying to get it rolling. But do you think, like, it really – like, where you get drafted, uh, like, even if, like, like, for instance, Johnny, he gets drafted somewhere else, maybe an organization where it's like – and even – and you too, you know what I'm saying? But you play – you still play nine years in the league. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if you get drafted somewhere else to an organization that's already got their shit together, do you feel like your career takes a different – and I'm not taking anything away from your career because to play nine years of shit, that's I – would, I would think so because if you think of certain players that went to an organization that was already, like, say, established, but they had, like, those draft picks that were up high, um, a Utah or Gordon, um, he was – not saying if he would have went somewhere else, his career would have panned out like it would have. I'm just saying, like, if you go to an organization that's already, like, established and winning, they already have a pedigree of what they already been doing, I think for sure that, that, that matters. Um, you see Draymond, how he gets drafted to Golden State, and it's like he flourished. And I take away from none of his skill set, his IQ, or anything, but he was put in, he got drafted to the right situation. Um, it goes in, like, shit, when I was at Iowa State, that didn't fit there. I didn't even come to Q's and shit, I was, it happened. So it, it definitely does. It definitely does. People don't understand that though, bro. They be like, oh, right. like if they see something, they like, oh, he, he took, like, it's so like fit is, like you said, Draymond, if he gets drafted to uh, Charlotte Hornets or, or like my, it's a whole different, you know right. what I'm saying? And I'm not taking nothing away from Draymond because he's going to be a hall of famer. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, it, it's, it's a big, I'm telling you, bro, like, and obviously, you know, it's a big difference, man, where you get drafted to and where, you know what I'm saying? It does. I mean, uh, you know, people don't see it like that. Oh, you supposed to do this, supposed to do that. I hear that. I get it. I hear that. But, nah, it plays a huge, huge factor into that. Because if you see people getting traded, people moving around, just trying to get the right fit for their team. So it's like they looking for that piece. And that. so it's like, why do they do trades? I mean, clear up cap space, but they still trying to find – a mold or somebody to go that chemistry exactly so yeah bro so you you played like i said eight nine nine seasons right yeah nine seasons league that's that's incredible so i'm looking right here minnesota phoenix lakers clippers pelicans and wizards mm-hmm. out of all those teams what team we we're just we we're just talking about this right now what team had the best culture ah clippers Really? Even when and you played with the with the Lakers with Kobe? I did. Uh, with the Lakers, I would say the organization when I was with them, they, they like, win championship. I don't give a damn who. We got the, the Lifetime Fitness team on this. That's who's suiting up. And we are a championship caliber. That's what they think, championship. That's all they think about. Yeah. Which is cool that you got that confidence with winning, winning, winning. But um, it wasn't – it wasn't right during that time just because I'm not saying we didn't have the talent, but it was just Kobe was so, so like mentally like like ran that organization. So the coaches really couldn't coach like they wanted to with the players that they had because he was like, Oh, that shit don't work. Nah, we're doing something else. <laughs> Point blank. Like we doing something totally different. He will be missing from practices for like a week. We can have just come to the games and who? So really? imagine, imagine practicing, right? So we go through, have the whole bulletin up, going through X, Y, and Z. Well, that's what we're doing. Game time, we and they warming up, looking at the board. What? Nah, 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 nah. Ain't doing that. <laughs> it's like yo, and then the coaches be like, <laughs> "What you gonna tell them? You can't say nothing to him." So we get on the court and he. Blowing defensive coverages, and we like looking like shit. We just got to cover for him, basically, because he's doing his own thing, like his own thing, straight up. And you, what you gonna tell Kobe? Nothing, bro. And he like telling you, right, if I do this, do that. And it's like okay, so we learning on the fly on the court as we like. And then when he gets out, sub about the game, then we get to do our stuff that we practice. When he come back in, oh, it's out the door. We just cover. Cause we just it's right here, mid post. That's it. Space. You got the way. <laughs> Straight up, he start doing this right here, throwing his hands up. You might as well get out the way. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> Yo, bro, tell so tell me a little bit about Cole, bro, because like I mean, I've heard stories about his work ethic. I know it's unreal, but um, just tell me some stories about what sticked out to you from Kobe, some like workout, whatever it is. Uh, first off, it's like a huge, huge blessing, like to be able to say, uh, play with him, converse with him, train with him and all that. So for me, I am growing up a uh, huge, huge fan before I got to play with him, um, but he gets injured, Achilles. Everybody saw the Achilles injury. He walked off the court, all that. So he's doing the whole rehab and I get traded there. Um, no, I didn't get tried to sign there that summer. So when he was battling and coming back from that injury, he tells me, uh, like, let's get in the gym. So mind you, he ain't shot, ain't worked out, ain't did nothing. So you hear the stories about him working out 5 a.m., 4 a.m., all day, whatever. So he's like, okay, let's get in the gym like seven. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to work on cold. That's all I'm thinking about. So I get in the, um, go to the gym. So he gets in there. He can't even move. He, he barely walking, basically. He's limping on the court. But he's like, okay, we just finna do like one little pull ups. I'm thinking, what the fuck? How? How are you finna do this? <laughs> <laughs> How are you finna do this, bro? So he like, all right, we're going to do 25, literally, going right, catch it, one dribble, like subtle, like one dribble pull up, 25. After you get to 25, go left. Then after that, back to the basket, shimmy, like over the left shoulder, turn and shoot, 25. So I'm like, all right, so we go. He's like going, like say you just sprain your ankle and it's like 10 and you barely, that's how, you, that's how slow he's going. So he went one dribble 25. I'm thinking, like, oh, this dude can't even move, bro. So from that point, <laughs> it's crazy thinking about, bro, but we was in the gym for almost three and a half hours, bro. We did but one you weren't going to say nothing. You weren't going to be like Cole. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, go sit down, bro. I, I got it, bro. So he like, do this, do this. And like, okay, after I got 25, but I was leaving him. When I get to 25, he's still like 13, 14. He like, go left now. So I'm going through the whole workout. Mind you, we only on the right, right side of the court. He had to do the whole left side. So it's like almost, bro, at least almost 800 shots on that side of the court. And then, bro, I'm so legs on, everything tired, done. All right, we see you to see you tomorrow after we finish. So I'm thinking like, oh, all right, bet. So <laughs> same time next day. And then progressing month by month, he started being able to move. Shit got real. It got real. And he'll run through the whole side of the wing and I'll miss it. One drill pulling up, fading out, all those shimmies and pump fakes and move. We progressed to doing all that stuff. So it was like incredible to see him from barely walking until full blown, like working out. So I commended him, but it's like, you let me see you at your lowest. You know what I'm saying? We know Kobe at 81.62 and three quarters. So he showed me him barely walking, like, unfiltered like here this is me like i'm going to show you how hard i work and how hard i train so that one something we did that we went through the season we sucked terrible we was some shit we went like one of the probably the worst <laughs> the worst seasons ever but it was like every night with him every night he'll tell me on the plane like this is my gift and my curse if i feel like the other players on the court with me ain't really playing as hard as me I'm not passing. I'm taking on the entire team by myself. Dang. Like, full, like, I'm sitting there like, all right. But he was fucking with me by telling me this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that made me go hard. It made me, Ed, Wayne, uh, I was like all the young players. We were like, he would want that lineup in because he knew we were like, we were fucking with him. We were playing. Right. Y'all playing. was hungry and young. He was trying to yeah. show y'all the way type shit, right? Right. So he was like, and I think who else? I mean, he'll pull teeth with Jordan here. Cause that motherfucker, when he played, he was like unstoppable on the re like any rebound that went in, no matter who was on the floor. When he was locked in, he was getting that board. So he wanted him like, come on, Jay Hill, come on, Jay Hill. So he wanted that lineup on there out there with him at all times. But it's like, but we ain't playing 48 straight. So he would be frustrated when the other player got subbed in. But that next season coming in, 
Uh, um, he was like, yo, Wes, um, mind you, the season ends uh, April like 12th. He's like, we taking 10 pictures. I still remember verbatim. He, I'm sitting there. He nudged me. He was like, everything going to be cool. I'm like, all right. He's like, you ready to get in the gym? I'm like, yeah, this hit me. He hit me April 14th. Let's go to work. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so <laughs> I get in the gym and we, I drive out there uh, to where we were working out at. And same thing. So we're doing the shimmy pump fake step through jumpers, going at it, same, same ordeal. But this time he implemented defense. So we're doing defensive slides, full court. <laughs> Yo. Shit. This cat was sick, bro. He's sick. So it's like April. By the end of May, I didn't touch no weights, but my body was so strong, bro. Because we're doing defensive slides, full dribble, shooting, one-on-one. We're doing everything. For like three and a half, bro, three and a half hours, three hours, we're going at it. Like, I'm dog shit tired. And the, by the end, like that June-ish, I was in the best condition of my life, straight up. But he would stop after every, like, every, like, workout. He'd be like, who your favorite player? I'm like, you. He's like, nah, nigga, not me. Like, who? <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I'm like, uh, Pippen, T-Mac. He said, no, not me. <laughs> so he pulled up film on Pippen, like, defensive wide. You need to watch him. This is how he was. He guard everybody. All I'm like, cool. So we watching film after we work out. So we sit there, watch film. He's breaking it down. We talking about it. And he's like, you like Mac? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, Matt Cole, he's like, yeah, he, 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 he was just joking, whatever. Three days later, I'm sitting there lacing my shit up. I look up, T-Mac walk in the gym. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, yo. So they get to talking, like going like this, reminiscing. I'm sitting there like, oh, my God. Like, Kobe and T-Mac finna be here. So they were like, come on, so, I'm going through workouts, footwork. They're like, no, 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 do it like this because if they trapping you from the top, you have to be able to keep your feet like this so to spin out to go the opposite way. So yeah. if you spin out this way, Kobe, like, yeah, if you spin out, you got to be able to step through. If you pump fake on this defender to get back, I'm like, yo. I'm like, so this whole time I'm doing all footwork, fade, and all this, but they dissecting every step, every move. This one, you do one dribble, this way you got to do it. How low you got to get to go this way. Because if you go this way, a lot of defenders, a lot of teams, they like to have somebody at that nail. So if you're getting low, I'm like, dog, this shit is sick. Damn. Like, this is why these motherfuckers are who they are. So it's more than talent when it came with them too. And they worked out every summer. Like people were like, oh, we didn't know they were. Every summer they worked out, they said. It was crazy. So, so people like wanted to seek out Kobe and work out with him. Cause like you said, like yeah. all the shit that you was just talking about, detail, right? Like, yeah. like super detail, but that's what made him one of the greatest ever. Ever. And he's like repetition on everything. So before you saw number the eight Kobe was raw. He right to left, left to right, all crazy moves. 24 was more like he dissected the defense. Like everything that the defense did predicated to try to stop him. His counters were on predicated to the defense. It was sick, bro. He was like a serial killer in a way. Straight up, bro. Yo, like like he he was obsessed with what he had to, with being great. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And he Man. had notes in his phone, bro. Like, I'm sitting he behind me. He hit my chair and I turn around. He was like, look, LeBron, his tennis, D Wade, KD, Steph. James, all in his notes, in his iPhone. Like, get on Steph's right hand, make him throw that pass. I know he can make it, but keep making him do it. Making him do it. He gonna hit crazy shots, but stay on his right hand. If you have to jump on the right hand, just stick on the side and make him drive to the basket. Same thing with LeBron. Make him uncomfortable. He had to see you 94 feet. So when he catch you, don't give him a head of steam. Like, bro, it was like crazy, bro. I know people would like give game plans, in college, you get game plans about the team, your opponent that may be like the man on the team or whatever, but he knew about everything. He said, watch their tendencies when they don't have the ball. How did they react? How did they act? How did they act when somebody else get the ball? I'm like, dog, it was a different type of film session when I sat with him. Yo, so, so that's why like when the coaches wrote up on the board, 
No. He, he, he was like, <laughs> nah. nah. He, was, he, was, he was doing more work than they was. Thanks. Man, he earned that, bro. That's that's wild. Like I knew, like I knew about the obsess- obsessive, but it's just crazy to hear from somebody who experienced and went through it with him. Well, we were working out one time, right? He like, I gotta leave. I gotta go to China or whatever. We like, all right, cool. So me and Nick Young were working out because Nick would come start coming with me out there. Uh, so we were working. out. He said, make sure I get in the gym. So Nick joking like, man, he ain't gonna know if he get in the gym or not. Like joking, or whatever. You motherfucker, Facetime us, bro. What y'all doing? I'm working. What y'all doing? I'm like, oh shit, this nigga checking in. I was like that. Like I just got it in. I'm like, yo, all right. <laughs> like obsessive, bro. Man, that's yo, bro. That's unbelievable right there. So, wh- what do you think? So, nine seasons in the league. Tell me one of your favorite moments. Um, probably, I would say. Even though we played Memphis, probably when I was with the Lakers, it was probably just being like, they, I turned to a fan. I have more than that, but this was a Kobe moment for me. So we in Memphis, we're going back and forth, crowd going crazy in that moment. And he comes in the huddle arguing with the ref. Then Tony brought up a play. He come in to play, he sit down, ain't paying attention to the board, nothing. Got his water drink, looked at the board, literally looked at the board, Give me the ball. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit. Like now he was like, just give me the ball. Like, fuck, why y'all doing some shit up? Give me the ball. He got up, walked out the huddle. We still sitting down and we were like, all right. Everybody looking like, all right. So we get up and he looking at me, give me the ball. So threw the ball in, threw it to Jay Hill at the top of the key. Kobe run across splash, elbow, hand to go up. Like, I'm in. I'm standing like damn near at the top of the left wing, looking like I'm gonna see Kobe actually be cold right now. This motherfucker Jay Hill grab the ball, look, shot that shit. Oh. <laughs> he misses it, right? Break it. We lose. We going back to the hole. Kobe looking at him the entire from that until the locker room. When we got locker room, that one cussed him up and down. That one, you think I'm like, oh my God. Next game, same thing. Finally gave it to him. We in Detroit. Uh, we losing. And he was like, give me the ball. Like then trying to drop a play just to get us something going. We on we losing. We was going like they went on a run. We down probably like eight, ten points or some shit. Kobe's like, you know what? Fuck the play. Just give me the rock. Man, we start feeding them on the block. He ran like 14 straight, <laughs> like working, like working. I'm like, you know what? I see. I'm like, all right, cool. After that, he gave you so much confidence playing with him. When I left and went to the Clippers, it was like, it didn't even matter who was on that team after that. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody has a name politically, like they catered to whoever they catered to, rightfully so. They earned it. But after leaving that team and going somewhere else, it was like, nah. He instilled that confidence when the, in the players that he uh, that was on the team. So when I got to um, the Clippers, it was the same thing with me. Like, shit, y'all swinging the ball game online. I'm shooting that shit. Ain't no. You had the blueprint already from him, though, right? Like, oh, you, you had the blueprint from one of the greatest of all time. So wherever, like you said, wherever else you went, it's like, man, I know what the fuck time it is. Yeah, I know how. To, you I know mean? Know. And then I knew players' tendencies and whatever. After that, on top of this from playing. The, playing against him or whatever. But when Kobe passed Jordan in Minnesota, that was probably, that was dope. He passed Jordan on third all time. So we was in the arena, he breaking air ball, it was crazy. I'm like, yo, what you doing, bro? You trying to pass Jordan or what? I ain't worried about it. I'm like, what shit? Like, you know you trying to pass Jordan. Yeah. He was missing everything. Then he finally started run, rattling shit off. Uh, he ended up shooting two free throws. He like rattles the first one. I'm thinking like, yo, he finna trick it off. But he finally hit the uh, hit the second one. He passed him, and you could tell like he was like uh, reassign relief type of thing. It was dope though. It was cool. That was his idol. Yeah, he was like, I don't understand why people are comparing me to him. He taught me everything I know. So people like I said get upset that he's mimicking Jordan. Well, he said, motherfucker taught me everything. So. 
but no, the Clippers was like, I would say being there and, and like we would go on, like that team there was crazy. There's no reason why that we shouldn't went to the finals at all, both years when CP and everybody was there. Cause that shit was unreal. CP, DeAndre Jordan, who else y'all had? Blake, JJ, Jamal, Josh ah, yeah. Smith. Like we had nine deep. Like Josh Smith, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Josh Smith when, when he was athletic. He was, I mean, he, I don't know if he was doing it, he's still athletic as hell. He still was dunking on people, but he was like another like Right. He was solid. Yeah. Like we had a squad in that second year. We had Jeff Green. We still had CP. We still had uh, Jamal, Blake, DJ. But we had a team, bro. They just how um, does how does Kobe like? I mean, Kobe like a different animal. Like from every, I don't care how good you is. Like how, but how was like you know playing with him and then playing with CP? Like how was that different as far as like? Did they have some of the same tendencies as far as like work ethic and stuff like that? Yeah, for sure. The work ethic was there. Uh, CP worked countless doing like full workout. He come, he still do stuff like later on in the night. He was the same thing as far as work ethic. Um, but for me, what set them apart is Kobe mental. He just didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> he just didn't care, bro. Win, lose, draw. He didn't care. He's shooting. He's just riding. He was like, ultra, ultra confident. Like, he just didn't care. CP was confident too, uh, but Kobe was a different animal, man. Different yeah. animal. Okay. Different animal. So we had two big goals on that team. But who else was on it? Go ahead. Blake and DJ. And it was just, they got, it was just too petty, man. It was just too petty. I mean, it was just, they just didn't agree with a lot. They bickered a lot. And it's like, for what? We trying to win. Like set that aside. Like, like yeah, they were in, they was just in their own way. Yeah, that's a fact. It's a lot of that. It's 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 pre Madonna type shit for sure. So you play nine years in the league. Now you go overseas. You go to one of the best teams in Europe. Uh, right. And then I think your coach was Rick Pitino. Shit was nuts. So tell <laughs> yeah, tell me about <laughs> you know tell me about the transition, bro, from going nine years in the league. And, and and still going over that team, they treat you good. Like that's shit. Yeah. That's that's top notch. But tell me about that transition. You know, going from the league to overseas and, and how that experience was playing uh, for. One, um, you heard the horror stories. Oh, they don't pay. They do this. And I didn't have no expectation going over there. I was treating it as an experience. I want to hoop because the last year it was like weird, up and down with me, but the career wise because. A lot of teams were going to be built. They were trading everybody off. Uh, get to a team with New Orleans when I first got there, and they were like really trying to figure out what they want to do. And ultimately, they ended up trading AD, which was crazy. So you see what they were trying to do. They were trying to just really clean house. So I went to another situation where they were doing that. DC was the same thing. Um, so not really playing and competing for anything, just playing for the love, basically. Uh, but I want to get back for playing like actually playing for something, you know what I mean? So going over there was a deciding factor for me to get back to hooping again, like really get to hooping. So I get over there and it was nuts. When me and the crowd was like crazy. It's they popping flares during the game, they shooting off. I mean, it's crazy. Imagine, it's like a college atmosphere on crack. It like times 10, bro, it's crazy, bro. So it was like, that adrenaline, that, 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 all that stuff that you experience, like running out of the dome and it's like the crowd going, it was that again. So I got to feel that um, because prior to that, it wasn't that, that feeling that love, like it was, it was gone, it was drained. So getting, getting over there was, was a good feeling that I, I needed to feel again, just from playing and being a hooper again. Um, they do a lot of shit different. Uh, they end up firing the coach after the game type shit. It was like crazy, bro. It was crazy. Like, so <laughs> we come in there, basically, we lose a game we ain't supposed to lose. But we went to double overtime. It was like winning the game. The other team was just on fire, hitting everything. Yeah. Um, he come in, he didn't give us no speech, no nothing. He just sad, basically. Like, he just, 
He looking like, I'm like, yo, you straight? And he's like, oh, no, oh, God, bring it in. We brought it in. Come to practice next day, he was fired. I'm like, oh, God, all right, whatever. He so, knew already. <laughs> I'm already, bro. But Patino came to a game, two games before that, come in. And they were like, he was a coach last year, halfway through or whatever. Uh, he might come here. And it was like rumors about him coming back, trying to get back. Uh, so we get there. And <laughs> Patino thought he was Louisville all over again, bro. Oh, man. Um, bro, that's what I said. Same thing. Oh, shit. He talking about pressing. I'm like, hell no. Nah. Ain't nobody pressing. <laughs> we implementing all this full court pressing, this full court trapping. I'm like, bro, man, we got 30 plus years. Like, people, Nick Lates is 30. Tyrese yeah. is 33. It's like, go down the line. Everybody 30 plus. And then we had young boys on the team that he wasn't playing. So it's like, we're not going to be out here trapping and pressing people like that. Like, we right. ain't 17 no more. Like, what's going on? So he didn't really get it in the sense of everybody was still pros. They were professional. You know what I'm saying? Like I get it, like this is your your scheme, your 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 game plan, but end of the day, like you still dealing with pros. Like we finna press, they finna dribble, pass that around and lay up dunk, wide open three. So right. we, we start getting smacked. Guys, it works. I'm telling you, it works. We like bullshit, like it ain't working. So we were going a tug of war back and forth for him with that. So it was just, he was just stuck in his ways. He just wasn't the right fit for that team. You know what I mean? But I mean, he, he had success clearly with, with the, in Louisville. I mean, hell of a run when he was there with the, the talent that he had, but that was Louisville. We were in Euroleague, bro. It's like, it's two different, way, way different, bro. It was a. It was definitely was an experience, though. I definitely had a good time out there. For sure. And it's crazy because, like, you would think great coaches are supposed to adapt, right? Like, how you gonna yeah. bring what you did in college, right? Like you said, to a high level professional team. Like, yeah, ain't yeah. nobody pressing in the NBA in the, in the pros, regardless. I don't yeah. know. You ain't pressing overseas or NBA. We ain't no, doing that at all. Ain't nobody pressing. <laughs> then they start trying to do the uh, the zone, uh, so that's when it got for me it got a little weird because <laughs> when they had like a tip for tap uh, one game, uh, he we implemented the zone one time in practice, but I'm thinking like yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong because he doing it different. Yeah, I already yeah, know. That's wrong. Yeah, so he did it right. I'm like, you know, I'm let him coach. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, nah. I'm telling the player like, yo, if I go up and bump, you bump me back. I'm not staying, bro. They were like, but then they were talking about I stay there, but because the ball, I'm like, yo, that's all wrong, man. Now you're going to get people confused. People going to be, all right, so that was practice. Getting the game, same shit happened. I move, I bump up, bump back just because I see him coming. I get out the way. He yelled at me, yo, what? You supposed to stay? I'm like, motherfucker, I know how to run the zone. That's one thing you ain't going to tell me how to do. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm going to check film. I'm like, well, go check film then. So we had halftime. He checked film, and we walking out. Wes, my bad. I was wrong. I'm like, you ain't got to tell me this. I know. It's like, well, we're not going to go back who's right, who's wrong. I'm just trying to help you because clearly the coach that I played for, that's his thing. You know what I'm saying? That's who he, that's who he learned it from. That's what I'm saying. It's like, so really? how are you going to argue with me about this shit? It's like, let me try to help you help us. Right. But no, nah, it was it then I think some of the coaches though they did try to implement it a lot. So they would ask my opinion on oh, what you see, what should we do? When I was with the Pelicans, they tried to do that a lot too. They asked about the zone. So I know a lot of teams try to do it just because um they they need a different scheme because you can't really guard nobody in the league. Yeah, no, that's a fact. Yeah, hey, <laughs> and too, bro, when we see somebody playing the zone. We gonna teach y'all. We gonna, we gonna. That's one thing we know. We know about that zone in and out. We man, come on, man. You can't tell. And, and if, like you said, if I see somebody playing it different, I'm like, no, nah, that ain't. Uh, nah, that ain't I, it. <laughs> that ain't it. That's crazy, bro. So let's let's uh. I want to hop back into Q's. Talk about Q's for a second. Um. So you, I mean, you a legend. You for that. You were there two years, but for that one year, you had you know one of the best seasons in Q's history. I mean. I, I can't count. I don't know 
off the top of my head how many All Americans, uh, but it has it, it's been a lot, but not a whole lot. And you were, and you were one of them, bro. Mm -hmm. What does Syracuse mean to you, and what does the community mean to you? Because I mean, still to this day, I know you feel it. Like they showing you love still to this day. Like what does the community mean to you? That's home, bro. That's like they have a special place in my heart because that that I became me out there. You know what I'm saying? Like I played at Iowa State, whatever in high school, whatever travel, but Cuse, that's home. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't want to discredit the fact that I went to Iowa State, but they were like, where you go to school at? Syracuse. Straight no up. question. I went to Cuse. Uh, so community embraced me. Uh, it's crazy that you even said what I, as far as the community, because it was like, I want to do something back there. You know I mean, as far as real estate, doing something back there. Oh, you, that's, uh, man, if they hear your name, they, come on, man, they on you. Definitely want to do something back there. And it's like, it's been so long since I've been back there. I definitely want to bring my kids, especially the boys out there, because they know ball now, you know what I'm saying? So they definitely want to, definitely want to see it. I definitely need to get back there. It's been too long, but during the circumstances of COVID and all this crazy stuff going on in the world, I don't know how long that'll be, but I definitely want to get back there because it's been way too long. Yeah, when when all this calmed down, you definitely got to get back up there, bro. I mean, you already know how the community they love to they love to see you, bro. That's I, mean, I would definitely need to get back. I just I definitely miss, especially all oh, dinosaur barbecue from the wings yeah. by uh, insomnia. Uh, yes, bro. Yeah, um, come on, dog. That's late night, <laughs> right? The <laughs> Metropolis, up the street. I used to be in that joint all the time. Come on, bro. That, I mean, come on. We we gonna we gonna keep those stories under wraps because we I had. Some, you know what I mean, but <laughs> we had some. Last question for you, bro. So you've been playing ball professionally a long time. What's next for you? Like, you, you gonna continue, you want to continue to keep playing? Um, do you got do you got plans to kind of go elsewhere? Uh, what's going on with you in that area? Um, I always going to continue to hoop, regardless. Uh, professionally, as far as I'm doing it as a career at work, I am officially saying I'm done. So you can hear that I'm done. Fam. Okay, so we got it. We got it first here. Yeah, bro, I'm I'm good. I'm done. Okay, um, okay. I, I think I came to terms with it just because it was. I think it was time, not even saying, it was just trending. Probably when I went, not even going into my last year of my country with the Clippers. So uh, I was feeling that way anyway. And it was crazy because Doc pulled me to his office, was like, you should work for me, you should coach. And I'm like, and at that time, I ain't trying to coach. What you talking about? I don't even want to do that. And he was like, no, it's just like, people gravitate to you. Uh, like you don't talk a lot, but when you talk, people listen type of thing. And like the teammates, like you relate the message different because when I say it, they don't want to listen, but you will say the same thing, but they understand it when you talk or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. Um, same thing I went to New Orleans. I was with AD and I was with Drew. And as I'm talking to them about defensive schemes, and then the coaches were asking me, what did you, what should we do as far as guarding this person? I'm thinking like, bro, y'all got the, y'all watching the film. But they were asking me questions, so it was like one of those things, like, it was like slowly unraveling. So, get to D.C., same thing when I was there. Um, they trying to talk about the zone, breaking stuff down, people's tendencies, went overseas, playing over there, the same thing. They were asking me different questions about how they should do different rotation. Uh, what did I see as far as what was um, effective on, on like the best defensive team I've been on, what was effective, what helped. And then leaving there and then everything, the world ends, basically, it stopped. So I had a lot of time to think, reflect, and I was like, you know what? It's time, bro. I'm not saying I'm trying to go full-fledged in the coaching, but I'm not opposed to it. You know what I mean, if it's front office coaching, but I know for sure, I'm hooping for sport now. I'm back to just hooping and lacing it up just for for the hell of it on my terms. So yeah. But that's but bro, that's like big to like like you said, Doc Rivers pull you in and be like, oh, that's like so do you think like that's something you would want to look into? Yeah, I mean I've been talking to certain people about it. Um I actually um 
reached out to him to say, like, when he, when he left, went to clear, they told me congrats. And I told him, I'm thinking about the post birth thing. He was like, he's all ears. So it just me continuing to pursue it. I've been talking, been in talks with a couple of people too. It's just, until then, it's just like me figuring out me again because you get lost in this being a, being an athlete, being a, just hoping, you know what I'm saying? You don't really know what you like, you know what I'm saying? That you, right. And then people look at it like, oh, you should, you played this. It's like, yeah, it's cool because you, you consume so much time into doing something that you love and then it stop or you move on to something else. And it's like, shit, what do I like doing? You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like one of the things I'm, I'm dealing with now, but the luxury of like having the time to be at home, be with the kids and like really just chill, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't been able to do that in years. So I'm, I'm doing it now, so. Yeah, and it's funny that you said that, bro. Because basketball, I love basketball. Like this is this is what right my whole life, bro. Like that's all. I, so so like when I was like, you know, I, I haven't played pro in you know three four years, but I still I still hoop. Like I, you know, in the TBT in the Bayhams Army, yeah. I still and I still got some gas in the tank. Shoot, right. don't. You know what I'm <laughs> I but, always watch them. <laughs> but <laughs> it's crazy because. You right, bro. Like now, when basketball stops, now you gotta find something different. Not not like you find it, but like, what do I like to do? And yeah. I, like, I'm going through those stages right now. Like, just you know, doing the podcast and uh, you know, trying to coach the kids and stuff. So, no, nah, you right, bro. Uh, it it is it's different. It's definitely different because it's like I mean, it wasn't like you know what I'm saying. We went to school, you know what I'm saying, but we we weren't like finding a career out of the our degrees, you know what I'm saying? Like we can pursue that, but our talk was hooping. You know what I'm saying? We put so much time, effort, everything into that. We sacrificed a lot by putting it into ball. And we set up ourselves after basketball. You said you, with the kids, podcasts, you know, we set us up for doing stuff like that. But outside of that, it's like, what is it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm figuring it out though. It's cool. It's 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 fun though, cause it's like I get to figure it out. That's it ain't got nobody turn. It's on on me now. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like okay, we got to be here at nine. We finna practice from nine to eleven, and then you finna get your, your shots up and everything. I ain't really got to do that now. You know what I'm saying? I get to yell at them picking these toys and stuff up yeah. now. <laughs> hey, the simple stuff, bro, but it mean the most, man. Right. Right. Hey man, I, I appreciate you coming on, bro. For real, it, it was this was a dope convo, and uh, man, I wish the best for you. And you know, we definitely gonna stay in touch, and you know, keep me updated on them uh, on them co coaching opportunities that you got going on. And okay. but we gonna link again. We are gonna do this again, bro, for sure. I got to. I definitely appreciate you um, getting me on here, man. It was long overdue though, cause it's, like, it's good catching up though, for real. Yeah, and we we gotta get you up the cues when everything. Everything, you know, calm down because, you know, you already know how that love is. Yeah, thanks.